Scares that care, charity weekend. Scares that care. It's okay. We're good. We're good. Nobody knows that because when he went in the water, he swallowed his tongue. And that's why he didn't talk. Okay? But I can talk. It's, sometimes I don't shut up. Like that's the problem. Probably the truth is that usually the higher actors, they talk because they hire stuff and they never say anything. Yes, I do. 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 Does anybody have a question? Yeah. All right. Okay, if we read King's book, Unmasked, obviously we know how he got started in the stunt industry, but how about Kane? And you know, for people who haven't read it, if you don't mind me saying a few words about it, but how did you all get started doing stunts? Well, as Beth said, then, um, I started as a stuntman at almost the same time as Mr. Morgan did. Uh, he was a little more advanced than me at a stunt school in Santa Monica. We were just talking about it. And uh, he was officially in the class because he could afford it, I could not. So I would kind of just go around and hang around with those guys on their days off when they'd still be there training. So I kind of tried to pick up some stuff that way. but. Um, first 25, 30 years of my career was all stunts, and then I started doing acting, so. Next. Well, um, she wants to know about you guys starting. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. Sorry. <laughs> so, to be fair, I wasn't privileged to go to school or to be engaged. I was just thrown into it and was fortunate enough to have a stunt coordinator like Kane or Tom to keep my ass alive and show me how everything would turn out if I did it. So I didn't have any formal training, it was just kind of with JT on the job training. Um, so mine was a little different than most, um, but I, I feel, you know, I was able to contribute to the series uh, professionally. I, I just want to say one thing, sorry, Darcy, that something that's never talked about is the fact that most of the guys that played Jason were stunt people. Now, when something is told to us... Speak for yourself, goddammit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was an actor. Uh, anyway. When someone, when a director tells... Done? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. When a director tells a stunt Let person me know when you're done, so that they're going to be on fire... <laughs> When a director tells a stunt person they're going to be on fire, for instance, the stunt person says, okay, um, when are we doing it and how is it going to work? Now, this is something I've never even talked about, but imagine from CJ's point of view, not a trained stunt guy, and now is going to be told he's going to be on fire. So that, you know, that's interesting to think about from more of an acting standpoint when you're told you're going to be on fire, how much harder that must be. because. You know, stunt people are often trained to be on fire, so I think it's pretty impressive that CJ was able to be on fire in his scene out in the water um, because he had been trained to do that. So I don't know how far in advance he knew that was coming, but, you know, that's pretty cool. Surprise! But, I mean, Kane's right. You get told to do a job, you do the job, you don't ask a lot of questions as long as they're not immoral. And if you've got the right people around you, the, the experts that have done the training, that, have, that are the experts as stunt coordinators, uh, you feel pretty good at the end of the day because they give you kind of a one, two, three education on how it's going to the process, and then you leave the rest up to <laughs> God, and everything turns out well. 
But as a stunt that wasn't, coordinator. That wasn't a question. The goddamn question was, how did you become a stuntman? What is, what is all this dramatic stuff? You want to know what happened? I was an actor on a film called Nighthawks. And I met a guy by the name of Cliff Cudney who was a stunt coordinator. And Don Robinson was a stunt coordinator. And these two guys, Tom knows these guys. Shane, uh, Kane don't know anybody. <laughs> Tom is a professional stuntman. And, and, and they said, do you want to do stunts? And I said, no, I'm an actor. Because I got hired as an actor. He said, but you look good. You're in good shape, you know. You should be a stunt guy. I said, I don't, I don't want to be a stunt guy. I'm an actor. He says, stunts pay fourteen fifty a week. An actor gets eight ninety. I said, I'll become a stunt man. <laughs> and he took me under his wing, and that's how I got to become a stunt man. I went to his Cliff's uh, the Professional Stuntman's Association in New York, and I became a goddamn stuntman. It wasn't a big deal. There was nothing dramatic about it. So you were a whore. <laughs> you went for the money. I did everything for the money. I didn't do anything for any of fame and fortune. I had a bag over my head. Who knew who the hell I was? You got a mask in front of your face. You think they know who you are? Yes. Well, wait a minute, were you in the credits? <laughs> when I had to go to the bathroom, that was a problem with the bag and everything. The coveralls. Do you know what it's like to take the coveralls off? Yeah, but that? see, if you can't find it, you can't find it. It doesn't matter if it's or not. <laughs> What do, you, what do you say, Tom? How'd you become Next a question. <laughs> Tom, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah, that's fine. No. Am I on? Okay. Uh, uh, my turn to get picked on. <laughs> well, actually, I became a stunt man uh, because I happened to be working with the Forest Service, and this is a long time ago, as a smoke jumper. I worked in Montana fighting forest fires, and they were going to do an, uh, uh, an old TV series called Wild Kingdom in the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And so they had an episode where they're going to save a wild buffalo herd from a fire, uh, smoke, uh, from a forest fire, and they use smoke jumpers, and I have to be there. And, you know, if you jump out of an airplane with a parachute, it's kind of like doing a stunt. So as soon as I got done with that, I came back to LA because this is where I was from. And I talked to some stunt guys, and they told me about a school. Santa Monica, and I went down there and told them how I'd already been in a show, and they said, great, why don't you come back some other time? So I, I kept coming back until they finally took me, and I did train there, and I learned quite a bit on the job and with other stuntmen, and uh, continued on, and that's been that many years ago. He and I come back for quite a ways. He breathed through his ass. <laughs> See, he doesn't breathe through his mouth like everybody else because he had no tongue. <laughs> I guess that'll be on Facebook later. <laughs> Steve Dash tells a young man under age about breathing through his ass. <laughs> Lovely, Steve. They, if, if they're in here to see us, they can take it. Trust me. <laughs> They went into hibernation because he had to wait for the next movie to come out. <laughs> You're late. Did you bring a note? Where were you? You missed the whole first part. Now we got to do it all over again. <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? A question for everybody. Um, Aside from the Friday the 13th films you all starred in, what is your own personal favorite Friday the 13th film? Part two. <laughs> Aside from, <laughs> meaning not the one you did. I'm a, I'm a fan of part seven. I think the series carries uh, power between uh, four through seven. Two was okay. <laughs> uh, my Darcy, speak up, Darcy. What do you have to say, Darcy? Come on, say something. We need 
Darcy to speak. Move your mouth, honey. <laughs> How'd you become a stuntman? Actually, that's a long story. Um, I was hired for part five, and then I, was, I didn't do it. I was hired for part six, which I did do, and in part seven, they put a clip of mine for part six. So I was hired for three of them. Uh, I have to tell you that, all aside, I am a favorite of part six because of the humor. And that was Tom McLaughlin, the director. And uh, I did like part one, but uh, part six is probably my favorite. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So that's two out of five of us that didn't really understand the question. Um, I know, I said two. I am also a fan of part six myself. I um, wonder why. And, you know, part two, what, what was it? Scrotum head or what was it? Scrotum sack? Yeah. That was a uh, butt crack. I was a real Jason. Yeah. Not if you can't find it. <laughs> I was the fake Jason, but the most popular. <laughs> I will get a comic store in the near future. Check out the check out the axe, okay? Okay, who else? Question. Question. The question is, other than yours, what was your favorite Friday? Oh, other than yours. So oh, you other than mine, what was my favorite Friday? Oh. If you had listened to the question, you would know that. But you're busy blabbing out of your ass all day. <laughs> That's breathing. My, my favorite Friday the 13th movie was the Friday the 13th movie, the first one with Betsy Palmer and, and Adrian King and uh, the other guy, uh, Kevin Bacon, uh, <laughs> who uh, I did a soap opera with called uh, Guiding Light. First one was the good one, the real one was the suspense one, the rest of them were all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Jason just walked in. Uh, Check it out. Hey, Jason. And what version of Jason just walked in the room? <laughs> Is it part two? The one that's breathing. <laughs> I think he's a fake. I think it might be part seven. <laughs> I think it's Jason from out of space. Why? Why? Hold on, let me check my phone. I got this question. I got this. I'm gonna I'm gonna call somebody who knows that one. Harry Man Harry? Henry. Henry? Henry? Harry? Harry. Harry, get all the Harry. back in the corner there, did any of y'all want to play it more than once? Or was one and done enough? I'm going to speak first, because I'm the Of course you are. <laughs> when I, and longest. When, when I, shut up, when I did two, <laughs> I did two, and it was, it, the Paramount, it was a low budget film, it was about $900,000. We shot it up in Connecticut. And you got to remember, in your mind, just think, Friday the 13th was nothing. It was nothing. I was actually there shooting a film called Jason. That was the working title of the film, was Jason. And I was very excited because I had the lead role in a film. But then I found out I got a bag over my head. <laughs> and then I got no lines. But that was okay. But I, I, I can tell, what was the question? <laughs> That's acting. They went, after I did, did part two, and we realized what was going on. Paramount was very cheap. They didn't want to pay a lot of money. 
they were complaining about all the time. They complained about doing the stunts, all the adjustments that I was getting. And then it was over, and I, I went on, and I was doing a film called Alone in the Dark, and then I got on the soap opera with Kevin Bacon, and I got a call from my agent. They said they want to do part three. I said, that piece of shit they want to do. <laughs> He said, yeah, I said, no, I don't want to do it. I'm working on a soap. What the hell do I want to do that thing for? Had I known then what I know now, Kane wouldn't be here. <laughs> or Tom, or the, the, the gay guy sitting on the other side. I guess we all should bow to Steve Dash, folks. <laughs> now, Obviously, Steve did it for the money. I did it because I loved playing the character. Money didn't matter, but... Yeah. I told you it was a war earlier. You did it for the money. I mean, look, all I can ask you, I can tell you that, you know, it, going back to being naive and doing stunts, it, it wasn't in the forefront. However, there was an opportunity, and Kane and I have talked about this, and he's mentioned it. Uh, he did pick up the role in part seven, and at the end of the day, picked up four of them. And, you know, even though Steve doesn't like to admit it, he's been one hell of a Jason and ambassador for the series worldwide. He's such a suck up. <laughs> hey, but I was on Days of the Night, Shining Dead. I, uh... I would have played it if I had been offered it, but uh, I was busy with other things, and actually when I got the job, it was just another stunt job at the time. I had no idea that it would turn into anything like this, and uh, uh, I would have done it again, but I didn't really pursue it. I didn't realize what it was. Kane's the one that really did, and you gotta hand it to him because he took hold of that part, and uh, he really wanted to do it and make part of it himself. Um, this is for Darcy. What was it like from your death scene in Park State? Frightening. It was truly amazing because CJ made me feel so safe. Can you hear me? Um, I literally just kind of gave him my head to throw into a camera. And uh, we discussed this earlier. And we had a lot of fun. <laughs> I just put my faith in everything including CJ, and uh, it worked out. And I actually have the longest death scene with any of the Jasons. Um, I really fight him mostly. He, uh, Jason just goes up and kills somebody, puts a knife through him or what have you. And uh, I actually battled him, and I'm only 5'2". <laughs> Go figure. Thank you, CJ. He's still here. Um, watch it, just watch it now, watch it. That's the Bay. Bay. The area, watch it. No, uh, actually, it was very difficult to do that shot because I've talked about it. I had prosthetic hands on, so I couldn't grip anything really well. They gave me a nylon sleeping bag that was had blood everywhere eventually and a 90-pound dummy in it, so it really looked like a body when I hit it against a tree. So it was really awkward and you know, I always try to do my best to make things look powerful and I felt awkward and off balance and I was, you know, as you know, I hit the thing against the tree more than once, several times and each time I did it, I would lose my balance and I get pissed off and do it harder the next time and uh, eventually I just was slamming it and wishing it was a person in there. And uh, so it wasn't that enjoyable to do, but boy, when I saw it on the screen, it was really amazing to see the entire audience stand up and cheer at the Chinese theater in Hollywood and in the big theater. It was unbelievable to watch that. What was your favorite uh, 
kill or stunts from the movies y'all work. Wheelchair down the stairs backwards with a machete in the head. <laughs> I still don't know how the wheelchair stayed upright, by the way. It really, I just watched it the other night again. It's a great scene, but I don't know how the thing stayed upright while it was well, rolling down the stairs. I'll tell you, we worked on that, and it truly is, not because it was in my film, but I think of, of the, the other stunts that, that were done in all of the, the series, I think that that one, we worked on that for about a week before we actually shot it. And the guy that was in the wheelchair uh, was a stunt guy by the name of Tony Farantino. He was James Farantino's brother, and James Farantino, the actor. And what we had to do was, uh, I didn't do it, I can't take credit for the stunt, but Cliff Cudney, who was the stunt coordinator, weighted the wheelchair down with weights on the bottom where the feet are. We put 50 pound weights on each one of those things on the bottom. We, he ran a line along the banister going all the way down, attached the wheelchair to the line going down, and we did no rehearsal on it. We just set it up, we shot it, it was in the rain, we had a rainmaker, that guy made the rain, and it was a really tough stunt to set up, and it, believe it or not, it was one shot and we got it. One shot. Was there ever a dummy in that thing? Really? No, that was Tony Farantino. Really? It. It was a, 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 he was James Farantino, it was a great stunt. It was, a, it was, it was set up and, and we got it one shot. And when you get one shot with a, with, with a, a film company, they're very happy. For me, the best stunt, the best action was when I got hit with a front loader because I got to help set that up, get some air, and fly through the air and hit the ground, and uh, slide a lot. So that was probably the most fun for me. Uh, mine, in my opinion, was the uh, breaking of the back, uh, similar to Kane. Not because there was any blood or guts, just the power it took to be able to take somebody and flip them like that. You know, anybody can twist the head off or pull some brains out, but just the power of picking somebody and breaking them in half, or the power that Kane used to take that fleet bag and slam somebody, I mean, that's force. You know, a little different. Your turn, buddy. You already answered it, right? Don't you always like the sleep bag, if I recall? Yes. My question is for Kane. My question is for Kane. When Freddie and Jason came about, were you considered for to be Jason? And what happened as far as the day? Were you pissed off? Okay, there's several questions there. Um, uh, you, a lot of you have already heard the story, but I'll make it quick. Uh, I, I had I was called to a lunch meeting with an executive at New Line Cinema. I sat down with her. She gave me the script for Freddy vs. Jason and said, we're finally doing this movie. And I said, fantastic. It would be my fifth time playing the character, and I was very excited. And then a director was hired, and I started getting a weird feeling from people. Nobody was calling me and stuff, and ultimately uh, I was replaced and never given a reason. Uh, so yes, I was very pissed off. Not just because I was replaced, because that happens. But I thought after four films over the course of 15 years, you might have the decency to give me a reason for why you replaced me. Even if I don't agree with it, at least tell me why you're thinking that. Didn't even have the courtesy to do that, so yeah, I was pissed off that, you know, at least you could have done that. And uh, especially since I thought I was doing the movie. If I had never been told that in the first place, then I wouldn't be quite as angry. But, you know, when I'm given the script and said we're doing it, I kind of thought that meant I was doing it. And uh, so, you know, it was, uh, it was a bad time in my career and, you know, people think, oh, come on, you move on from that. And it, it's true, I did. And, but it was, a, it was a tough thing for me because I loved playing the character so much that 
Um, I didn't want to see somebody else doing it, I guess. Um, maybe that's selfish, but um, that's how I felt for a while. How much time and effort did it take to put in all your movies? Except for Cam, God knows Cam's pissed off all the time, so I already did. <laughs> How much time and effort did it take for all your movies? Shooting ones? Shooting ones, yeah, shooting ones, yes. Yeah. Uh, mine was, uh, I was on this show uh, a little over a month, and the first two weeks we shot, and then we had to get off for a week because Amy Steele, the girl that was playing, uh, you know, uh, what was her name? Yeah, thanks a lot, Jimmy. Yeah, the one of the uh, She got herpes. And we were... She did. She got herpes on the lip and they couldn't shoot. Why? I'm here to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing more. She got herpes and we had to stop shooting for a week, so that was a week, so it was three weeks and a week off of herpes. <laughs> I got paid the whole month, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I said, I told you he's a whore. Hello? I, uh, I can't tell you for sure, I don't remember how many shooting days, but it was about two weeks. You answer our question. I think I was only there for about four days. Four or five days. It was quick. And I, I have a small heart in part six. You know, I, I believe it was a, a five week shoot in totality in Covington, and then we did a few more days back in LA, so five to six weeks in total. Good, it's not working. <laughs> Sorry, it is. Uh, part seven was eight weeks. Part eight was also eight weeks. Uh, Jason goes to hell since I wasn't in character as much. I was stunt coordinator, but in character probably only about three weeks. And then Jason X was actually 12 week shoot. So um, that was three months up in Toronto. This question's for Kane, um, back here in the back. I know you said you were pissed off and upset about the Freddy versus Jason thing, but how did you feel when you got called to do the motion cap for the video game? How happy and excited were you for that? Well, you can imagine I was very excited because I'm not the only person to play the character. They could have gone with anyone that had played the character or someone who's a, a mocap specialist. But in their mind, I should do the motion capture for the video game. And I felt amazingly honored and still do. Once again, back kind of as the character, but wearing spandex. So. <laughs> It is a little harder to be scary when you're wearing skin-tight spandex. Uh, but they asked me to do it, but I said I didn't want to do it. <laughs> Another good choice, huh? He's full of good choices. Turn down the third movie. Yeah, that was brilliant. Um, but yeah, so I was uh, very happy, and uh, evidently we're doing some more in a couple weeks, so... This question is for all of you, so it's kind of like related to the question of a while ago. What's your least favorite Friday the 13th movie? Oh boy. <laughs> Why don't I go first? <laughs> oh no, go ahead. I, I don't know. I mean, if you really want an honest answer, unfortunately, just for me as a horror fan, my least favorite is part five. Sorry, Tom, because it wasn't really Jason, that's all. I've heard that before. <laughs> I never watch them, I don't know. <laughs> no comment. 
I liked them all. I'll, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't like Tim. It wasn't the Jason that I didn't like, I just didn't like the concept of outer space. Right? I can see that. That's fair. Absolutely. The, the actor, I'm, not, I'm just telling you from the series perspective, you know, and then my second least would have been, to be quite honest, would have been Freddy vs. Jason, because now you're bringing in, you're taking away from the Jason character with an infusion of another character and it doesn't work. It's either Jason or it's nobody. That is fair. I will say that when I was given the script for Jason X, or before I was given the script, and they said, hey, we're doing another uh, Friday movie, we want you to do it, I said, great. Uh, it's going to be a Jason in space. <laughs> I said, yeah, right. That's funny. <laughs> what is it really? Jason in space. Oh, you're not serious, are you? <laughs> so I wasn't really jacked up about the concept, but I just tried to make Jason consistent, though. But, but I will say that the, the wardrobe was totally cool from a Terminator perspective. I mean, that was just cool looking, yeah. but it just didn't, you know, to me personally, it just didn't grasp what the series was meant to be going back to part one and what little shot in part two with the guy with the bag over his head, et cetera. That's also what people say about Jason Goes to Hell. It was a little too weirdly different than what people are used to. Maybe some people like the change, but other people were like, nah, it's not really what we like. So I understand that too. Um, in the game, who killed Jason's mother, or did she just die? Could you repeat that question? Sorry. In the game, who killed Jason's mother, did she just, or did she just die? To me. Oh. Spoilers. <laughs> in the game, who, who killed, killed Jason's mother? In the game. Hmm. Um. Not sure if I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so really, uh, I don't want to. I have so many, you know, Easter eggs that I know about, and you know, those are within a game and secrets and stuff like that. And no, I'm not going to tell it and tell them to you. So I think I should just remain silent on that one. Yeah. All right. Nice try, though. <laughs> Yeah, my question's for CJ. In part six, in the scene where uh, the paintballers were out in the field and you saw one paintball hit Jason's chest, I was hearing different stories about that wasn't you in that costume when you initially got hit. Now, was there another actor that was playing Jason and you took over the role, correct? Yeah, it, it, get rid of the rumors, that wasn't me. <laughs> Um, originally, um, a gentleman who's a stunt coordinator, going back to the very first question, way back when, uh, had gotten the role. I was a secondary. I met with Frank Mancuso of Paramount. As he did, he got the role. Unfortunately, right after the triple de decapitation and the paintball scene, um, first dailies came back. They weren't totally satisfied with the physical structure. It just didn't hit what they were trying to uh, take off the screen. Unfortunately, you know, he was released and I was brought in like four days later to finish out. So there's two full scenes. Uh, one of them where walking through the woods, you might notice the pants are a little short, that's not me, and the paintball. If you look at that physique, we're a little different. You might just think that I'm wearing Patty, but he's a larger gentleman than I am. However, in fairness to him, is that, is that Halloween? <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> Sounds familiar to me. We have four words for you, sir. You are fucking dead. <laughs> like I was saying, so that gentleman did go on and has gone on to not only be, from what I understand, a great stunt coordinator, done stunts and directing. So his career has been just phenomenal at that point. But going back to, like we've all said, there are times when a director or somebody makes a decision from the executive studios that they're not totally satisfied. They don't necessarily tell that person why, but that's their decision, they're writing the paycheck. So you will note that if anybody ever asks, I'm very straightforward about it. Um, from what I was told. Or no what is did, did somebody hear some of the mouths of Easter eggs on somebody's butt? 
So it's my question. I own it. So that's true fact. There you go. Somebody asked Steve a question. Give him a question. Actually, I have a question for all of y'all. Let's Steve start. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, my question is, is how did you get into the mind frame of a silent, supernatural, homicidal maniac? Bullshit like that in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was easy. I know I was getting paid on Friday. <laughs> Back to being a whore. <laughs> I, 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 seriously, when I, I, I was getting paid and I had to think about being crazy and it was hot in one eye, not like a hockey mask, it was like one eye. And uh, I, I thought about uh, doing stupid shit, you know. And, and, you know, loping, I did a lot of loping. These guys didn't have to lope. They ran and they flew and they, they did all I didn't run. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Stuntman isn't always giving as much credit as possibly he should be about acting because when you play a role, you, you tend to double people a lot, so you watch what they do and you copy them. And so I, I had done enough stunts in the, before that that I had played different kinds of characters and this time I was going to be this killer. And I just put myself into it and um, played that guy. And the director liked what I was doing so I kept doing it. I just acted natural. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you've probably heard me say this before, but I, it always sounds like a joke, but I mean it very seriously. If there was a scale of a person who's a regular uh, personality, calm and you know, reasonable here, and then on the other end of the scale, there's a psychopathic murderer, here, my real personality is somewhere in the middle. So it's closer to this bad side than the good side. So it's easy for me to get to that raging point. I don't know, it's, it sounds like a joke, but I really feel that, and you know, you guys know, I mean, up until recently, I used to choke the fuck out of you in a picture. How many people have been choked hard in, yeah, see? <laughs> and uh, unfortunately I can't do it anymore, but that's another story. Um, but, no, we can't. Um, but, you know, so I, I felt it a quick trip to the murderously psychopathic personality and it felt natural, so I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's how it feels. This is for all of y'all. Do any of you guys have any favorite memorabilia from the filming? I have my death mask. When CJ pushes my face through the outside of the Winnebago, I actually have that mask that I'm selling. So. I have nothing. <laughs> I have nothing. I had two hockey masks, I still have one. I kept all my hero masks, and uh, at the beginning it was easy, but by the time Jason X came around, they started realizing how valuable the hero mask was, because typically I would wear one mask the entire film. Other than Jason Goes to Hell, because you'd have one, and then you have one with a bullet hole, and then one after the explosion, so there were several hero masks, but the other films, I wore basically one mask, so I knew on Jason X that production was going to want to keep the hero mask. And I was like, fuck that, I'm keeping it. So, I had a duplicate mask made for the final day of shooting, my final day of shooting. And I wore it in one shot, and I was wrapped for the film, and they said, that's our mask. And I said, um, all right. You keep the one I wore for half a day. I'll keep the other one. I probably shouldn't even tell that story. Huh? 
not real bright, am I? <laughs> We'd like that mask bag, sir. Remakes, just any remakes in general. Well, how, do how do you feel about remakes? Well, the, uh, me? <laughs> they use likenesses of me in three, four in the final chapter, so I get paid for three, four in the final chapter, and I need two, so I get residuals for all four movies. How do I feel about it? Keep making them. <laughs> You're back to being a whore, isn't he? <laughs> Not about the quality of the quantity to this guy. He is really about the money, isn't he? Uh, that's the only Friday I didn't see was the quote-unquote remake, the, the last one that was out, because uh, the way CJ didn't see Jason X as being the Jason that he kind of was used to, I, that's what I felt when I saw the trailer and Jason was sprinting and setting traps and building tunnels, and I was like, that, that's not the Jason I know, so... That's the only one I never saw. Well, in general, I think that any any film that's got sequences, the first one is usually or sequels is usually the best. So, um, in general, I would say the first, the original of anything, uh, like Pirates of the Caribbean, not the first one was the best. And you can pick out other films like that, but the case of there's good. But in general, uh, sequels don't necessarily uh, live up to the originals. Yeah, I think that I would prefer to get into somewhere between four and eight, that retro Jason, that look, that image. Um, but I don't think, in fairness, that when you do a film of this type, you don't realize the magnitude that's going to have 30, 35 years later. And if you knew that, you'd probably shoot three or four of them in a one-year window, put them in the can, and release them over a period of time so there was some consistencies throughout the actual series. So I'm not a big fan of uh, handing off a new script and everything all the time to somebody to put their, what they feel is it's supposed to look like. They gotta maintain some continuity, I think. In all, in all seriousness, um, when I did I two, was serious. No, no, seriously, when I did two, who knew? Yeah. Who, who, who could even imagine in their wildest dreams that 38 years later, and it's only because of you, the fans. Because you guys are the best. Seriously. You're the best. You come, you see all the films, you know. Had I known then what I know now, I would have done three. I would have done four. I would have done anything. I would have done it for nothing, like Kane did. But because it's such a great franchise. It's a great franchise. And the only reason it's a great franchise is because of the fans. Not because of anything else. Because you keep coming back. You not only keep coming back, but you're devoted people, you, you, you're you honest, you're a great set of fans, and I don't think that there's any other fans in the industry. I don't care whether it's Sinatra fans or Dean Martin. I think there's nothing like the Friday fans. They beat the Trekkies to death. Forget it. <laughs> because they're all about aesthetics, and you guys are real, and I sincerely mean that, and I thank you very much. Give yourself a hand. But I, I'd like to cap on that, you know, and, and Steve always gets upset when I do this, but at the end of the day, you all said it in here. How many people have been choked by Kane Hunter? There's another good reason because the fan base, because somebody took care of that four times over, and I'm not saying that Derek or Ken or anybody else hasn't done an outstanding job, but there has been one person who's been out there consistently with four films, and how many thousands of cons has he been to selling this product for all of us? Kane. And the throw back at you from, from all of us is definitely an honor to have Dude, all sit your ass down with that costume. Okay. So you don't want to get a question. I, I, what were you thinking when you left home? I'm, Confident? He wasn't. But anyway, no. Uh, Would you like to meet Steve? I met him. He'll show you how to bring out your ass. He, he, choked, he had me get choked by him earlier. But anyway, um, so the Friday 13th game released a new concept that they're talking about having a, a teenage Jason that instead of having a bag, had his mom's dead mom's sweater as a mask. What are your guys' thoughts of, on, on that, if that would have went that route?
I'll, I'll answer the question. Personally, I, it, it don't work for me, just so you know. Um, I don't see it. The hockey mask has become the iconic piece of it. You start messing with that, you're messing with the series. Going back to the question was, how do you feel which Jason should be portrayed? It should be the retro with the hockey mask. That's what everybody knows Jason for. I think you're losing the That's character. Bullshit. Now you're getting too out there. The big, the big, the big. You're on LSD or something at that point. And that's fine if that's what you want as a fan. I, I commend you. But I think if you get back to the mainframe, you're going to find a larger fan base than just going to the left, to the right, or putting Leatherface in the next film with Jason, or going over to Michael and say, hey, you know, let's put Michael Myers and Jason's going off. I think you lose it. You lose it. But it's an opinion. Don't be so hard on them. 